Hello and welcome to The Natural State. I'm your host, Suzanne Kane. Last week, we discussed problems with recycling in Arkansas, and now is the time to address changes that we should all make in order to alleviate these problems. As you've probably noticed, today we are not in the studio, but in my car. I am on my way to the self-service recycling station here in Fayetteville. Due to COVID-19, Fayetteville suspended curbside pickup of recyclables, and although the decision has been a little more inconvenient, it has given me a great amount of insight into all that the recyclers do. And it allows me to create a very special episode of this podcast. The most important thing that you can do to become a better recycler is to keep your recycling uncontaminated. This means keeping your recycling clean, dry, and free of materials that don't belong in the recycling bin. Even after four or five years, my family still puts items in the recycling that I have to take out. Examples from the past month uh, include a green participant ribbon, certain waxy gift bags, and an old sheet of static window clings. There are preventative steps you can take to adjusting your recycling habits. Try to only purchase items that are packaged with easily recyclable materials like cardboard, steel, paper, and aluminum instead of plastic. If you do have to buy plastic products, try to stick with number one and number two plastics as they are the easiest to recycle. Number one plastic. There are some materials from my family's recycling that I have been surprised to learn can be recycled. Ibuprofen bottles and the Bath and Body Works lotion bottles were plastics that I didn't really consider putting in the recycling bin. The self-service recycling station is just about a mile from my home, and in the future I plan to use my roller skates and a wagon to take the recycling there, making the process completely free of carbon emissions. In addition to the Boys and Girls Club, I am also going to be making a trip to the Walmart Neighborhood Market, which is right next to the Boys and Girls Club. There, there is a plastic bag recycling container that takes all sorts of plastic film. And it isn't too far away from the Boys and Girls Club, so I won't be adding many more emissions. Hopefully, there aren't too many people here today. Um, thankfully, although, the, although it is slightly more inconvenient to participate in dual stream self-service recycling, I still see plenty of people at the recycling bin. Last week even, the cardboard was overflowing. There is a bit of a problem with cardboard and other bits of litter all over the ground, but that is to be expected because it's self-service and and you just can't expect everyone to pick up every little piece of recyclables. Put on my turn signal. And I'm just waiting. Yes, thank you, green light. Okay, let's see what the recycling station looks like this week. Yes, only one other car. It's great that so many people are recycling, but it's also terrible that you cannot socially distance well when there's 20 people at the recycling. I actually see recycling trucks here, which is very interesting because they do come and pick up a lot, but uh, but I've never actually seen them. Okay. I don't know if I can fit through. Um, well, this is awkward. This that car. Okay. actually run into the recycling truck. No, thank goodness. Woo! Alrighty, here we are. There's a little more signage now than when, um, about what can and can't go in the recycling than when we first started self-service. But the concept is still essentially the same. Alrighty, let's start with the first category, mixed paper and the cardboard. Let me see here. There's... I've got a lot of cardboard and mixed paper this week, a lot more than usual. It's one of the biggest categories of recyclables. 
now. I don't know where to put my laptop, except right here. Oh, okay. Here's the blue bag we use in Fayetteville. It's got a little divider way down here that you can't see, but it's got a divider, and one side is for paper and one side is for cardboard. Uh, here's the recycling bin. Um, the recycling bin uh, changed. It used to just have like small signs that showed pictures of what each category of recyclables looked like, and now it's got these um, colorful graphics, and um, it sort of has uh, some of the Recycle Something campaign graphics on it. Um, now let's go. I'm really hoping no one runs off with my laptop. I don't think they will. Um, I have today's newspaper, which my dad asked me to take to the recycling bin. I have some more cardboard. And then we get to go through the green bin. Green bin. All on the side. In a different spot than I usually do. Ah. Yeah, apparently there was water in the recycling bin. So uh, that's nice. Oh gosh. My poor laptop. I mean, the screen's already broken a little bit, but I just really hope that nothing else happens to it. Okay. Yeah, so apparently there was some water. Must have rained a few days last week. Next, we do plastics, uh, cans, bottles, glass. Um, most common number two plastics that my family has are milk jugs. They are number two. Sometimes I check just for safety. Then this week we have a bottle of canola oil, also number two. I think that's all of our number twos. So, we can run these over here. Next, we have the number one plastic bottles. That includes different cranberry juice bottles. My sister loves cranberry juice and I see it every week in the recycling. Water bottles. We take the caps and the rings off of ours. Um, although, uh, I'm honestly not sure just how necessary that is, but we do it. So these are all of our number one plastics. Um, Alrighty, next we have our steel and aluminum. We only have one steel thing this week and it's a can of beans. So I will take that over at the same time as I take over the aluminum cans, which are plentiful. We have one, two, three, four, five, six aluminum cans because my little brother drinks a lot of Coke.
my family didn't do as good of a job of keeping our recycling clean this week and I'm now covered in water and who knows what else. Um, oh, peanut butter can. I almost forgot peanut butter can, number one plastic. And then we have two things of glass, which you probably will be able to hear. Uh, I hate the sound of breaking glass, but that's, that's just the sound of trying to save the planet. Okie dokie. Not plastics. Recyclables are finished. And now we go on to uh, the recycling. The main bunch of it is finished. Now we are on our way to the Walmart neighborhood market in order to deposit our plastic bags, of which I have a lot of this week, into their plastic film recycling collection. Now I honestly haven't done enough research and I don't know exactly who's responsible for the plastic bag recycling. I'm hoping that I can back out of here okay. But I do my best to keep stuff out of landfills and, um, and I at least try to get it to the bin if there's a chance that it might end up being recycled. I am really hoping I don't hit anyone. Okie dokie, now we just have some nice driving footage. Driving, 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 driving. It, it still does make me feel slightly guilty when I drive my recyclables to the recycling station. Because at most, it's an equivalent exchange. Um, but it's probably not. It's probably not, especially because the recycling that I take is my family's recycling, not my recycling. So it's, it's all just, you just try to do your best. That's the best piece of advice I can give you. Do your best when it comes to recycling. Do your best to keep it clean. Do your best to keep it, perf do your best to keep the recycling clean and sorted. next to the Walmart neighborhood market with our plastic film recycling station or recycling bin there is um, there are two electric car charging stations at the Ozarks Go headquarters which I thankfully live very close to um, I don't know if I've ever actually seen cars charging at them. I hate to say it but then again how many people own an electric car and I'm going to be able to drive past and see them at the exact same moment that they are happening We'll probably put my mask on for this so you won't be able to hear me as well. Okay, woo! Ah, uh, yes, good old Walmart. Uh, I always feel so awkward because I've got the like entrance roped up off now, but like I'm not going in. I just need to drop off my plastic bags. Um, this week, actually, I have a little more than plastic bags. I have some bubble wrap and other plastic films because um, I did go and look on the web on um on a website and uh i 
found out that there's a lot more recyclable plastic material that can go in that plastics recycling bin. What is this happening? Okay, well, I, I'm wanting to swap, but don't worry, I will let you. Everyone, most everyone, a lot of people wearing their face masks. Alrighty. We are here now. Sadly, I'm not going to be able to take the laptop that I'm recording this on to the um, to the self-service recycling bin because I don't have another set of hands here to help me, but I am going to put on my mask and um, and take, I'll try to take all the bags in one fell swoop and but let me describe it for you. The plastic bag recycling bin is essentially, it looks like a trash bin, except it has a recycling symbol on it and it says plastic bags. Um, but it accepts any kind of plastic film, like bubble wrap, uh, air pocket things, um, uh, shopping bags, obviously, um, and other types of plastic packaging that can't go in curbside recycling. So, I guess I Alrighty, I have here one, two, three, four, five different shopping bags, each holding more plastic bags that I am about to take to this recycling station. Um, I will be back in just a moment. Tip. And now I will use my, uh, oh gosh, five-year-old hand sanitizer. Pro tip, if you have too many plastic bags for the trash bin to fit them in through the little hole, take off the lid of the trash can and uh, you'll be able to fit them all in. That is the end of my recycling run. This has been the Natural State Podcast. I am your host, Suzanne Kane, and thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna drive home now.